Jack, welcome to the CB Hallmark podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. Great to have you here. Uh, I started, wanted to start off with uh, kind of asking you how you got into real estate. Um, what kind of led you into the real estate business? Uh, pretty interesting story. When after college, I got into more of the construction side of things because my dad was a um, was a small time contractor, you know, doing remodelings and things like that. And then I I learned a little bit of the business. Then I started working in uh, in the construction sector, and along the way, I decided, you know. I should get my real estate license while I'm at it. So in the early 90s, what I ended up doing is going through Anthony School of Real Estate. Um, I don't know if they're around still, but um, you know, just going through that and got my real estate license because it fascinated me. I, I love the sector. I, you know, people are always buying and selling homes. So that's kind of how I got it. I kind of fell into it. Uh, and what were you specifically doing in construction? What was like the main focus? So it was. I have general knowledge of all sectors of the construction, but. I focus mostly on business development, you know, dealing with clients, uh, doing some takeoffs and estimating and things of that nature. You know, so mostly on the front side, you know, making sure projects are getting done on time, making sure the subs are showing up and things of that nature. So I've kind of handled all of those sectors in the construction side. You know, I and I really like working with people and making sure things are getting done on time and on budget. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and were you working more in the construction or consulting or a bit of both? Well, initially I was working for a contractor. I started with my dad and then I worked for another contractor. And then eventually that kind of led me to opening my own business. And I started a company with my brother and we were manufacturing windows and doors. So we had a little shop that grew to about 40, 50,000 square foot shop. Or I should say like a factory. Uh, we had about 50 to 60 employees. So we were making doors and windows. So I was still in the construction sector and I was dealing mostly with a lot of architects, interior designers and general contractors. So, and I really enjoyed that part again, you know, so much. And then how did that leeway into real estate? At, at what point? Great question. <laughs> so since I had my license, you know, and I decided to start, um, I had it with a broker in the area, but I wasn't very active. But then once I was more entrenched into the construction side of it, I decided to buy properties and renovate them, you know, for myself. And as well as having the general knowledge to help others who were looking to buy properties, either to keep, you know, renovate them and keep them or to flip them, you know. And that was something that I could speak to. So since I knew the construction side of things and I had, the, you know, the, uh, the license for real estate, for me, it was kind of an easy thing to live in both worlds. So. Right. They kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. They yeah. do. What's your, what was your favorite part or what is your favorite part of the construction side of things? You know, just seeing things being designed and coming to life. You know, most people, they look at a piece of dirt you know, an area that needs to be built or they walk into a house and they see disappointment, I see potential, you know, like, hey, we can renovate this kitchen or we can expand this, you know, room a little bit larger or, you know, upgrade the bathrooms or something from ground up, you know. Um, so my favorite part on the construction side is watching the progress. Mm -hmm. You know, it is, a, it is a tedious progress and it doesn't happen overnight and sometimes people get impatient. But it's, uh, it's something that I very much enjoy. And when it comes to life and it's all done, it's beautiful. It's like a piece of art, you know? Yeah. Sometimes so. it's hard for people to envision what a space could look like. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you come in. Yeah. And that's why, like in real estate, you know, um, a lot of times when we do listings and it's an empty home or a condominium or whatever, a lot of times we'll stage it. You know, we'll put beds and sofas and, you know, pictures on the walls because... People walking into an empty space don't necessarily ha get to see everything. And when you design it or you stage it, it's easier for people to understand. Yeah. So. I think some people are either pro-staging or, or anti-staging. Do you feel like it's, it's more important? I think, you know, listen, most of the homes that are being sold, you know, it's someone's home, you know, that's being sold. So in most cases, they have furniture and things of that nature. In, in cases that it isn't there, 
I always like the staging part of it. Not maybe not the whole place, but a few rooms at least to give people ideas. And again, it's not something that's going to be exactly like that. But I think once you walk into a place, you can kind of sense, oh, is this where the the couch is going to go, or or is this where I would put the television? Something to that effect. Again, it's designed. I feel that it's it's very um, it, it's a helpful tool, you know, to give people some direction and ideas. So. so, Jack, what differentiates you in the ADU business? What kind of makes you stand out? Oh, great question. Well, one of the things, uh, like we were speaking about, my background in construction. So I've been in the construction sector for over 30 years. So I understand construction very well. I know what to look for, what material should cost, and what good quality work looks like. You know, the other side of that is I understand the real estate market because I've been a realtor for a long time as well. And I know what you can do to bring up value to your property. So I think the advantage to what I bring personally is the knowledge of both sectors. And what I do is I advise people. I'm not a contractor. I'm not an architect. I'm not the one actually building these things. But what I do is when people are looking to build an ADU, they'll contact me and they'll say, well, how do we get started? I will meet with them. I will look at their property. I will assess the situation. To We'll let them know, you know how large of an ADU we can build, where it can be located. And then once we figure those things out, then I, I have a, a group of architects and general contractors that I work with very closely, who I value and know their work and what they bring to the table. And what I'll end up doing is I'll match those people with the, with the right architect, with the right contractor, but I will be there every step of the way. So I don't just make the introduction and move on. I'm there, I, I advise on the design, I advise on, you know, I'll overlook the, the construction costs, make sure things are on budget and so forth. And then I will be there along the way during the course of construction. So I'm kind of their representative. You know, the, the thing that I think, again, to your question makes me stand out is I am helping the homeowner because a lot of times, unfortunately, there's a lot of bad contractors in the industry. And there's some great ones too, don't get me wrong. But some of the bad ones give a bad reputation. Well, they take advantage of people and they'll promise things. Uh, or they don't really understand what they're doing and homeowners will buy into it because they give them a low price or something. So I'm there kind of as a buffer for the owners and those investors. And I kind of try to give them a little bit more of a peace of mind and to kind of see, um, you know, see their project all the way through. And, and once it's done, you know, then they can benefit whether they're going to keep it for a family member or as a rental unit. So, In your real estate work, is there something that you're specifically focused on or um, what's, what's kind of what differentiates you in your business? Well, I think real estate is very personal um, and everyone that's in real estate is an individual first and foremost. So it's important for me to make sure that you know, the clients, whether on the buying side or on the selling side, that we like each other and we're comfortable with one another and, and you know, and so forth, because it's going to be a long journey. So I work a lot, you know, with first time buyers and I quite enjoy that because I remember when uh, my wife and I, we bought our first home. Uh, we were just a couple of years married. We had a young son, you know, our, our firstborn, my son was only about six months old and it was a pretty strenuous process. So by knowing that I'm able to really understand a lot of first time buyers and help them. On the listing side, I, I see potential, you know, that if I'm walking into a property and a client says, well, I want so much from my property or I hope to get so much from my property, I look for ways, creative ways that we can maximize uh, their property value and bring people and uh, get them interested. And I also focus a lot on, you know, properties that need renovation or have the potential to build like ADUs or room additions, garage conversions or things of that nature. So I have some clients that I deal with that are investors only 
and they look to me to a certain extent for guidance in you know is this a pot- is this a potentially a good property for us to invest in and re- renovate so mm-hmm. so i i kind of do a little bit of everything you know yeah <laughs> what do you see is the future of uh, housing in california i think housing in california is always going to be a strong market even when the economy dips and interest rates rise and so forth um i think housing is something that everyone needs i mean we are the most populous state in in the country we're like the fifth largest economy in the world i think i may be mistaken but uh so california in of itself it's almost like an independent country the, the weather is beautiful we have a lot of resources so everybody wants to live here so there's a lot of demand and the interesting thing is i think back when people are saying now oh the interest rates are 7% 8% that's so high i think back when my dad in 1981 he bought you know his first home or our first home and i was i was young i was young i was in high school and um uh, basically he paid ni- the the interest rates at that time were 19% what that's like usury that's like credit card right and i remember when i bought my first house which i was just speaking to a little while ago my interest rates were 8.5% but they had come down from like 9 and a half or 10 and we thought we were getting the deal of a lifetime yeah so you know i know a few years ago the rates were a little bit lower and i hope that they do go back to that at some point and i think they will uh but none of us have a crystal ball but i think the rates are good right now there's plenty of activity and people are going to need homes unfortunately it's going to it's getting a little more expensive but the good thing about it is in california you know in most parts of california the the value holds and increases so even if right. people are buying something and they're only living in it for a few years it's 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 a better bet for them because in a lot of ways like especially in los angeles they can flip those or sell them and actually make money on them right so it's always going to be a a long-term great investment and i see housing being a very strong sector of the economy. Mm-hmm. Or they can also call you and get a an ADU done. <laughs> <laughs> or they can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because some, you know, some homeowners they don't want to sell or they don't right. want to buy another home for example. And they're saying, "Well, how can I maximize my property's value?" And ADUs, as you mentioned, is uh are something that's very lucrative uh and very promising for a lot of uh, a lot of homeowners a lot of investors and as of 2020 you know they kind of became all the rage because before that there were a lot of restrictions and things like that but now they're so much easier to build and they're you know you can maximize your property not only its value but being able to build several ADUs on your property if you have the lot size and it's another way for people who are saying look i don't have the money to go out and buy another property or i don't want to sell just yet or maybe i can create more value before i sell so adus are a great way to do both of those things yeah so. and also to make money and potentially build a portfolio absolutely yeah. yeah i mean i have clients and as you know i i'm very much involved in the adu sector because of my background in construction and understanding real estate you know i'm able to advise people um and give them my opinion on what i think is is the best way to maximize it and most people that build adus they primarily build them for rental purposes you know they're going to rent it out and rents are high so in most cases the rent that they receive covers whatever costs or monthlies that they have but in right. some cases they also build the adus for say elderly parents you know that they don't want them living on another uh, location they want them nearby or in in most cases or in some cases uh, having college age you know children that cannot afford to be out in a marketplace and you know you can keep them close by and that's kind of why I built my ADU mm-hmm. I have my you know college age kids living in it yeah. and it gives them an opportunity to have their sense of independence in their own space can invite their friends and whatever uh, without you know feeling like they're interrupting us but at the same time they're close by and it gives them an opportunity to 
you know, to step up to that next level. Right. Yeah. yeah. What would you advise to people in the market right now that are looking to buy? I think it's always a good time to buy, even with the rates being as high as they are. And now inventory being low right now in today's market, it, but there's still some opportunities out there. And I think, you know, if they can qualify, one of the first and most important things that most people need to do, and my clients, and I'm sure, you know, most seasoned agents do this, is I like to get my clients pre-qualified to make sure that they understand what it is that they're getting into, you know, what their income is, how much they can afford without stretching too thin. And based on that, you know, we find properties that fits their budgets and their need. But I, I think it's a great time to buy because, like I was saying a little bit earlier, property values are going to continue to go up. Mm. And, you know, I know people sometimes say, well, I'm going to wait until interest rates drop and then I'm going to buy. Well, unfortunately, there's a lot of demand for the market right now. And what happens when interest rates drop? It's going to be more of a demand. So what does that mean? That means the properties are going to go up in value. So uh, if you don't buy it now and you wait for the rates to drop, that particular property is going to be more or there's going to be multiple offers on it. So it's going to be a bidding war. Right. So, and what I always say to clients is if you want to buy now, you should. And if the interest rates drop, then you can refinance and lock it in at a lower rate. So it's a win-win situation. Right. Yeah. So I've learned about your construction mm -hmm. work. I've learned about your real estate work. And I know that you have a bit of a secret life <laughs> in front of the camera. Well, not so secret. Can you tell me a bit about that? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the film industry. I, um, it's something that um, I kind of fell into it accidentally. And uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, because before that we were living in the Bay Area and I moved to Los Angeles in 2010, 2011. Um, so I kind of, I met a, an agent who said, hey, are you in the film industry? Long story short, uh, I, started, uh, I started acting and I've been very fortunate to, to be in some pretty top rate shows and, and, and movies and work with some of the best in the industry. So, Can you tell me a couple of the shows or films you've been in? Yeah, I've been in uh, several. Um, and I'm still currently a, a very actively working. So um, I've been in Bosch. I've been in Ray Donovan for Showtime. I've been in Weeds for Showtime. Um, Jesus, I've been in NCIS Los Angeles. I've been... Uh, I, I mean, I've I've just I've just done a lot of different things, and I've also done films. Uh, my last couple of films, uh, one was with Denzel Washington, The Little Things, which is now on Netflix, and then one prior to that was uh, Emily the Criminal, which is actually also on Netflix with Aubrey Plaza. And so, yeah, and uh, yeah, if you Google my name, I'm sure a lot of that stuff will come up. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any new projects coming up? I do. Yeah. In fact, this Tuesday, June 4th, one of the projects that I worked on, it's called Clipped. Uh, it's on Hulu and FX. It's basically a mini series. It's six episode limited series, I should say, uh, about, uh, about Donald Sterling and the Los Angeles Clippers going back to 2014, 2015, when they were in the running for the in the in the championships in the NBA championships, and then Donald Sterling went on this tirade, racial tirade. Uh, so it was a kind of a sad uh, period in in our history, you know. But it's something that needs to be exposed and shown, so it doesn't really repeat itself. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a pretty large role in that, and I represent uh, the young lady, the lead. I play her attorney. And she's, these are all real life people, you know, and uh, I've met the actual attorney who I'm playing. So that was kind of a plus. Uh, and it stars uh, Ed O'Neill, who plays Donald uh, Sterling. A lot of people may know him as, uh, you know, from all, what's that, Love and Marriage, that, that show that he yeah. was on. And it stars Lawrence Fishburne, who plays uh, Doc Rivers, the coach of the Clippers. 
Jackie Weaver, and, and a lot of, and V, and, uh, v Steviano is played by a newcomer. She, I mean, no, she's not a newcomer. She's a pretty amazing actress. And uh, um, Cleopatra Coleman, or Cleo Coleman, so. That's it's, it's, incredible. Yeah, and it starts, uh, it's going to, uh, the first two episodes are going to air on Tuesday, June 4th. So I'm excited to see it. And yeah, me too. The, so that's one of my <laughs> latest projects. I have a few others in the works. And you don't just act, you do also directing and producing. I do, yeah. And mm -hmm. I also write. So I, I write screenplays and I've, you know, directed and produced a few of my own projects. You know, I have a, I have a couple of feature films under my belt, some shorts. Just last December, I also shot a pilot for a TV series. Um, so I'm always keeping busy and, you know. Where can we see one of your shows or one of your films? Um, well, a lot of those uh, shows that I mentioned or some of the ones that I mentioned, the movies, you know, they're, they're on television or streaming. So, um, you know, like a couple of the films I mentioned or the shows like Ray Donovan, NCIS and so forth. But the other ones, uh, you can YouTube it. You know, mm -hmm. if you YouTube my name, I think a lot of things will come up. Awesome. Yeah, and it's exciting. I enjoy that very much. But, you know, people might say, well, how do you do that in uh, real estate and all that? Well, you know, when you're on set, you're there for a limited period of time. So I may be there a day, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, you know, and then you move on. But in between, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a long periods of time mm -hmm. that I'm not acting or I'm not doing anything. So, and I'm not the kind of person that likes to sit around and just kind of, I can't sit there and watch movies or, or you know, during the day, not doing anything. I want to be productive with my time. Right. So I like keeping busy. I really enjoy, uh, you know, doing the real estate and the, and the ADUs. And, in, and I really enjoy dealing with people. I really enjoy speaking with them, spending time with them and helping them. That's so, incredible. I'm yeah. I'm in awe of how you juggle everything. I think you have a very tight schedule. <laughs> a very tight schedule. Some days I wonder myself how I do it, you know. Yeah. And we all have those good days and bad days, but I you know, I think that the the key for not just me but for anyone in any sector or any business that they're in, I think you have to be passionate about what it is that you're doing. You really have to enjoy Right. what you're doing and you really have to enjoy the people that you work with um you know there's always some here and there some questionable people that you're going ah, i don't know maybe it's not a good fit but overall most people are great Mo you know and if i'm in a position to be able to help in some way i love doing that mm -hmm. and you know when they're uh, you know the 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 results kind of show uh themselves you know whether the the effort was good or not so yeah definitely i like seeing that i love that well june 4th we'll be watching you <laughs> jack thank you so much for speaking with me today it was great getting to know you a bit better and i look forward to sitting down with you again i look forward to it too thank you olivia Thanks. thank you I jack being here